Good morning, good evening, good afternoon. It's been a long time. I know we said we were going to start doing this very, you know, very strictly in January. But, you know, life happens and uh, you get a little, you get stuck with mental health and uh, get stuck in your own ways, finding your own demons and going to your own dep depression that I kind of stopped really focusing on videos and started taking care of more of myself and trying to just, you know, go back to... You know, being healthier and being in a better mindset. And Joey's probably not going through that because he looks hella young. This man looks 33. How the hell do you stay looking 33 even though you're older than that? How old are you again? I'm 40. Oh my... Bro, man looks but 30. Honestly, I don't... I, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Because the, the funny thing is that I've been noticing that a lot of people that are my age are much younger, but then it also means of how well you have to take care of yourself. Like if you're not drinking and partying all the night, you know, exercise, which I started doing again and I'm, I'm sore. Yeah. I, I kind of feel that like I just got to running a mile, maybe like 12, 13 minutes. And, like, it's really tough to do a mile, but now that I accomplished it, like, can I push myself to do that at a less time? You know, maybe eight minutes is probably my next goal. Right now it's ten, but a mile is, is crazy because you don't think you can, I mean, you don't think a mile in your head is, like, long. But if you haven't done it for so long, I haven't done it in, like, three to four years running a mile that I gained yeah. so much weight. I'm now, I used to be 240. I think in June, my max was like 244. And I lost now a couple of pounds, I think 12 pounds. And I'm now at uh, 230, I think I just, 228, I'm sorry. So I just weighed myself and I'm 228. And I just feel like crap still. But I've been eating consistently like good food, fruits and all that stuff since february 6 and then and it's february what 23 24 25 25 so it's like it, it's tough going back and like getting healthier but i hope that i look like i'm 25 died. I'm 35 you know what i'm saying <laughs> yeah i mean i just like i know i know physically i'm strong but I don't look strong. So I'm still going through that type of mind, changing my mindset of what I'm eating and really what I'm doing at the gym. Instead of lifting heavier and heavier, why don't I just lift the same amount that I'm lifting now and push myself to do cardio? Because I don't walk around anymore. Me and you used to walk a lot. Yes. Yeah, we used to walk a lot. Everywhere. Central Park. Just... Just walk. walk. And most of the time we were looking for food. <laughs> yeah, most of the time we were looking for food after that. And it was just like, where the hell do you want to eat? I don't know. Let's go here. Oh, a word. Okay, let's go. Yeah. And, but but the funny thing is that we were also eating a bit, you know, healthy when we were coming into place. Like, you know, if we ate burgers, we were getting it uh you were getting it uh lettuce wrapped or something like that. Yeah, you know? we were. We were we trying were. to to like limit ourselves and drink enough water and you know and i was constantly like jogging every time i was off from work or before i was or before i was heading on to work during that time I mean, so I it was, was yeah I was, yeah i think i think i weighed myself when i was like doing all that with you like i was maybe 189 and now i gained 30 extra 40 extra pounds you know 50 pounds and it's like whoa where the hell did time go it kind of feels like yesterday last week we just hanged out and we just walked central park to me yeah the thing is that we we got stuck in a situation with covid we got stuck we didn't we weren't active because yeah. we had to stay home so that became that, that also made us gain weight and you know, and when it comes to, 
you know, the, the whole mental health situation, it wasn't easy to kind of stay happy during that time because it was like you were limited to what you normally did to keep you, you know, above water. Now it's, it's, you know, so it was, it was, all we did was pretty much eat and there was barely even going outside. It was very limited, which kind of sucked. And that would affect anybody, especially when you're at home and you're not leaving the house and you're giving thought to a whole bunch of things that could, you know, about your past or about, you know, sometimes even things that happened yesterday, you know, that can trigger your mental health and put you down for a bit until something comes up that makes you, you know, a little bit active to, 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 to stay up and, 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 and probably be happy. I don't know. It's very difficult to talk about it. Cause I was recently talking about it because it comes and goes for me at times. Yeah. Like, and I think it comes and goes with me too. When I start watching what I eat and then after a week or two, I'm just like, all right, I think I lost weight. So let's go back to, you know, just eating regularly, whatever I want, you know, stuff like that. And so constantly doing that throughout the past two to three years during the pandemic time, especially like I gained an amount of like just disgusting amount of weight that it's just like I really need to change the way I look at life the way I feel, eat, you know, it's just everything. And and it was just one of those nights, the night before February 6th, uh, or two days before that, it were, I can see that the little things were leading up to this. You know, it's kind of like you, you go back and you just take a look at the small things, the way I look at my hands, the way my hands, fingers are kind of like changing, the way my face has now become really pale. It's just yeah. like kind of like inflammation. I, I'm just not, you know, I I think I, I want water, but I also want Gatorade now. I'm drinking more Gatorade than I should, and I'm still sitting down stationary, not moving around. Like, it's just those little things that you just pick up and you're just like, well, I got to, like, eliminate that. So, yeah. And I can't, we can't constantly go into a podcast, talk about mental health with a certain character that we see on the movies or talk about a comic and yeah. not see that mental health part that we see through the heroes and talk about it. But we also got to do it ourselves. Yeah, of course, because um, it, it's, it's some... Uh... I think it was the other day that I started to, when you start to work, when you're working at a job where it's like you're all by yourself and maybe it's an active job or a sitting down job, you give thought to everything that has happened or things you normally do that you don't like about yourself, things that you need to change about yourself. And, and often when you realize, you know, when you start to realize it, you start to feel a little bit down, like, oh my gosh, there's a lot of things I need to change. And, you know, how can I do this? How am I able to make this change about myself? Like, uh, um, like if I don't sleep after a while, it starts to irritate me. Then if, and then at times it's like, I get irritated that I get angry at myself for any little thing that I normally do and then want to be argumentative for no reason at all. You know, like there's, there's, uh, you know, I, it, you tell me that I'm wrong and I'm going to be like, I got to go find this answer. You know, like, it's like, no, you can't tell me I'm wrong. I'm going to go figure this out. I, I, I'm pretty sure I'm right. And even if I'm wrong, I'll, you know, find it in, somehow find it in my way to try to, uh, uh, to make it seem like I was still right. And it's mm -hmm. stupid because it's like, I could have probably ended this. I could have probably ended this a long time ago. Like, and, and now it's making me feel bad. But the thing is that while it's in my head exploding, everybody's probably forgotten about it. Mm -hmm. But your own head is like literally making it like, it's like a clog is constantly moving 
making it, you know, and, and it's like, why am I still thinking about this? This was stupid. This is very dumb. Yeah. But you start to realize that it's like, it's n- not the problem. You're, you're not pissed off at that specific thing. It's probably, you're just pissed off at yourself because you're, you're, you need to change and that needs to like, you know, stay away from it. Like you need to, th- that negative, that negative piece of you that y- you, that negative piece of you needs to go. Yeah. So, um, I don't know. I've just been watching a lot of like motivational videos, just people losing, you know, the losing a ton of weight and also just kind of getting back into that sense. Cause I remember when I was losing weight, I was watching, you know, pumping iron. I was getting, I wasn't getting into CrossFit, but I was watching the CrossFit documentaries that were coming out people like Tia and Matt Frazier at the time where they were winning and I was just like yeah the cardio is like fun as fuck but it depends on the cardio you like to do and what you like to do so like this whole week I couldn't uh two weeks ago on Wednesday or something I I injured my shoulder blade after benching but it, I pinched a nerve beneath my mm-hmm. shoulder blade so I couldn't lift properly so this whole week I took the week off but just did cardio run at least three at least hit three miles of just running and walking. Whatever. I ran a mile, fine. I get to walk the rest of the week uh day or the the time I was there, you know? And it was just like, okay, little by little, I gotta keep pushing, gotta keep going, you know. It's 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 I just have to be consistent. I used to be very consistent. But yeah consistency is just going to keep going hopefully you know i get to lose maybe 50 pounds by august my goal is to hit at least 170 hopefully yeah. this year but i don't know if that's possible but possibly i think it's it's just you have to kind of maintain a uh, a regiment and to be active and to make sure that one thing, the funny thing is when I first, years ago when I started losing weight, it was uh, Planet, Planet Fitness was doing this whole special like, oh uh, for $50 for five months. So I was like, alright, cool. I'll do that. And then I keep running the treadmill over every day. 30 minutes, 30 minutes, 30 minutes, 30 minutes, every single day. And then later on I was like doing cardio and, and, and things like that. But then now, because of back then, now I feel like I'm trying to rush the situation. And it, like, can you hear me? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, so I'm, I'm literally trying to rush the situation and make in constantly looking at myself and i get i'm like i'm not losing anything but then it's because i keep looking at myself constantly to see if like it did i lose something did i lose something and that's a little frustrating because it's like it's gonna take time you have to realize that years ago when you started exercising it took time but i wasn't focusing on back then i wasn't focusing on what i'm losing i just kept going and then later on, I started noticing it because everybody started seeing like a different person in front of them. But now I'm literally like looking at myself and saying, why is it taking so long? Yeah. And it, and it takes time. And it's, it's uh, you just have to sort of like get it out of your head and just keep work doing the exercise. That's the thing. I think if like, yeah, I agree with you because being new used to just talk about, you know, all this weight loss and stuff like that and just getting better and motivated and then doing a little of the podcast and just talking about it here and there. And still, we, we still focused on that, but we were also just like thinking about the goal. But I think lately, like after the pandemic, like I kind of lost my mojo, my motivation of goals. Mm. And so Either even if I went to the gym, I was lifting, but I was eating like shit. And you, people, it's funny how the fitness industry and, and social media has changed because people say, "Oh yeah, you don't have to do cardio 
to lose weight. All you have to do is weight lift. You're talking to the... It depends on the audience, too. If they're yeah. skinny and they can do that, that's perfectly fine. But if you're big and you think you're going to lose weight and not do cardio, but only do weights, lift weights, that's you're going yeah. into the wrong mindset. because Or unless you're eating healthy, then you might start to see it. But cardio, I think, definitely helps. I got runners high for the first time this week. I was like, bro, a mile? This is nothing. I could have gone for another five minutes and it was crazy. Yeah, but, there's there's some moments where it's like it it you you get this adrenaline rush and you feel yeah. like you could go the extra mile, and but, it, and it has happened to me before. Like you just go the extra mile, and uh, I think that was a situation where I think I was like a little pissed off about something, and I went on a treadmill. I don't even remember. Like I just know I was just like playing the music, you know, and and literally just just running on it, and then like all of a sudden like 30 minutes have passed i didn't even realize it and i was like man i felt so like energized you got a dog oh yeah you got a puppy i forgot about the puppy yeah he, he barks at at anything he hears because our elevator is like very close by to our doorway oh, okay. so every time there's an elevator that he hears that he just starts barking it's very annoying especially at eight or seven o'clock in the morning <laughs> um yeah I, I just think you know we got to it it's it's a it, it's a journey and it's very funny when you hear the similar stories and you realize similar stories of constantly going trying to lose weight for a week or two and then going back to your same roots a week or two and then going back to the same roots it's it's funny it's funny how those the stories play out. It's funny because, you know, thinking about uh, food and, and, and consumption, m my wife came out and she said, um, okay, uh, you're losing the weight. You're trying to eat healthy. Are you going to still keep eating healthy once that weight is gone? Yeah. And, and it's one of those things where at some point you feel like, I'm good. I'm good. I'll eat this piece of cake. Yeah, I'm good. I'll go get that burger. You know, oh. I'll I'll eat that slice of pizza. You know, and then you don't realize it that it starts to get go get after you, it, it come after you, and then you're like, oh my god, I think I I, I need to burn this out because I feel like you, you know you gain some weight, especially as you get older, your metabolism starts to slow down. So, you know, it, it it's. And it also takes a little time, I guess, when losing weight, I think. And for you to, especially a person that works out, to even feel sore, like you have to push yourself. Yeah. Um, you know, since, you know, you are being younger than I am, you know, you just have to just keep it up. And, and though it's going to be very difficult, at least try to find a you know find something to do at least to it's like look if I can't do this right now you know let me do something you know at home or, or let me take a walk somewhere or like do something and there was something and I was listening to um to another podcast um pot meets world and they were interviewing Ethan Supley one of the he was he was one of the actors in the second season of, of Boy Meets World. And he was very big. He was big, huge. Mm -hmm. And he spoke about how he lost all the weight. But at some point, it was, you know, he felt this embarrassment about himself. And, you know, he was married and his wife didn't really care about his him being overweight so he never really focused on it until it became a problem where he had to and his wife told him this says look now it's you know i didn't care before but because it's a medical issue whatever number that you have to hit in order to get healthy because it's becoming a health problem try to hit that number 
you know, it's not like she told him, yo, you got to hit this specific number. It was almost like, you know, I need you to be healthy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and you know, and he did that. He, he lost the weight and he became more uh, aware of the stuff he eats and, and uh, you know, and he's also kind of like with her, his kids, he also kind of pushed that, not pushed it, but sort of like motivated them to also be, you know, very healthy and work out and exercise and things like that. And there was something that they were talking about in the podcast. It says, kill your clone, which means you don't just, you're not talking about killing the person that you were 10 years ago, five years ago, but at least a day ago or five minutes ago. Like if you ran one mile, you on Monday, kill your clone by running a mile and a half on Tuesday, you know, try to, and, and it doesn't have to be with exercise. It could be with reading. I read five pages this week. Oh, let me read 10, you know, and it was like, oh, like sort of like, make sure you kill that clone, that, that, that person that you're trying to go up against. So you're literally going up against a person you just had, you were five minutes ago. Mm -hmm. So always say like, sort of like be active and, and, and try to do your best. And it, it, I mean, it's, it, it also helps, I guess, you know, uh, on our mental health, because it's like, you start to feel a little bit better. The adrenaline starts to rush. You feel like a sudden like feel of like, you can do anything. If you were able to do the 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 50 crunches or the 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 the, the 10 20 pull-ups or or you run a mile it it it's going it, to that exercise is going to thank you in the end and you're going to feel a little bit more like I could do anything right now. Mm. Yeah. It's going to be a long process, I know that, but it's it's, you know, definitely going to be worth it and going to stick to it. You know, it's it's a different mindset that I have, definitely. I mean, I wish sometimes I could tell myself back as a kid, like, don't lift weights, rather go do cardio, but, you know, trying to get yeah. rid of stuff. Yeah, and it's going to take a while. Anyways, um, since we talked about our part of mental health, I guess, uh, we'll start talking about Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania. Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania came out last week on Friday. And I, for the most part, enjoyed it. I enjoyed it. Um, there was some run, uh, 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 joke runs that lasted a little too long that it had to. Yeah, 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 and yeah, yeah. Didn't care much for Modoc actually. Uh, yeah, yeah. I didn't. It didn't. It was funny. Yeah, I. To be honest, it was. Yeah, it was funny, but. They did a better job of Modok in 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 the Avengers game. Yes. That one that we try yes, to yes, avoid. Yes. <laughs> they, they, did they did a better job there. I agree with you. Um, a certain parts of the movie actually kind of made me dizzy. I think it was especially when they got into the quantum realm the second time, going around. Uh, you know when they all go in. And they had a fight scene with like a sun eater or something like that. Or it was a sun, but then it became a squid or something. I don't know. It, it, I just felt very dizzy. And then uh, when everybody's trying to escape um, with uh, Ant-Man and his, uh, his daughter, I think that scene really got me dizzy. I don't know. It's just like the shaky cameras. It kind of reminded me of Transformers with Michael Bay and him trying to do the sequ uh, camera sequences, uh, cinematic sequences, and it's just shaky. It's also moving around too much, and you're trying to follow this, and you're trying to see that. Yeah, I don't know. It, it, I was just like, you're doing too much in this movie. It, I, I feel, whoa, like, you got to bring it down a bit. It. Um, it was nice to see different characters. Were they meaningful in any way? Absolutely not. I actually like the guy that he was just like a, I don't know what the hell he was. He was like a lens. The head was a lens. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was actually it's pretty a, cool. It, it was funny because when I looked at him, 
I was thinking about them. I was thinking about them today because when I was running the treadmill, they have like the TV screens. Yeah, yeah. they were giving Thor. So I kept thinking about the Destroyer. Yeah, you know, when exactly. he shoots that. Yeah. So it was like it was pretty interesting. But but even watching Thor and noticing the fact that they the humor was smart. It didn't feel forced, and I feel like lately. The comedy is sort of forced in some of the new movies I think to try to make it more kid friendly. I think it's that and also timing. Yeah, I, I felt like they it, it got lost somewhere, and I feel with Thor: Love some and of Thunder it, and and Guardians of the Galaxy two, it just kept going, but it also felt long. You know yeah. what I mean? And it's just like, all right, you got the joke. Like you said the joke, give it like a second and keep going. Don't wait three seconds. Look for a response and then go, you know? Like, I don't know, that's what it felt like. Yeah, uh the 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 whole Modoc and his daughter conversation when they were fighting and he was talking about he didn't want to be a dick and, and I was like uh, I did not enjoy that entire conversation. I was like, really? How, how many times did you have to say it <laughs> yeah. in this entire joke? But the thing is, it's like, I, th it's, 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 I think Marvel movies are sort of kind of losing their touch when how they're, they're, they're writing their films. Um, yes, it was, it was good. It was enjoyable. But the way I, the way Jonathan Majors was as Kang felt like he did he shouldn't have been in this film. Like he was worthy enough to be in Endgame or in in uh, Infinity War. Like he had that that sort of attitude and and and, and it felt like he, he needed to be in something like that. Yeah. So it, it was kind of difficult for somebody as powerful as Kang the Conqueror to exist, to be in in the Ant Man and the Wasp, knowing Ant Man, Ant Man, Quantum Mania, to know and and know how the films are. They're very comedic. They're, you know, they don't get too serious in the villains they put out. So when they brought Kang, I felt like. I feel like he's going to be a little out of place. He is. I don't think Ant Man is the right person to fight him. Yeah, it needs to be somebody you know worthy enough to 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 take him out to fight him. Like I would have, you know, even freaking Anthony Mackie coming in as Captain America would have been lovely, or uh, you know Winter Soldier Bucky coming in, or anyone. A, a bit more serious, you know, because even then he wasn't even thought of as very serious, even in when he popped up in Endgame. It was just pure comedy coming on his part. And yeah, sometimes you have to put some humor into it, but at the end of the day, it's like, I don't know if I could take, you know, this serious when somebody as powerful as Kang the Conqueror is being, is the villain. Yeah, he was extremely powerful. I mean, not only was he... I, I think Okay, so... Jonathan Majors did amazing. He was great. He literally showed different sides of who he can be. Um, I And that's not saying the post credit scene. I'm saying, like, with it, throughout the whole movie. Um, he was exiled by other Kangs. I... I do feel like he wasn't necessarily evil, but he was in a way going to stop them. Yeah, which that's what it felt like. I mean, it. it, it I mean, I, the funny thing is, when I came home, I just I went straight to the last episode of Loki, right? Just to hear that conversation of He Who Remains, which was also another variant of Kang, mm -hmm. and him talking about uh, the multiversal war and all these things. So, you know, I guess it, they're all sort of, this, they're all Kang, but they all have some viral, like, 
rivalry in, in between them. And I guess he was one of the major ones, which I felt they should have gotten a variant and not Kang the Conqueror as in Ant-Man. Because when I was reading up on his stats and, and what he's capable of and his genius intellect, I was like, ah, I, it's not a spoiler because we know that he's going to keep returning because he's a variant. So fans will know, but he gets killed in this one. I don't know if he does. Hmm. You think he probably got sucked up into uh, 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 a, like a probably like a smaller version of, of that hmm. somehow, but I don't think he does die. I think we might see him come back. Yeah, but this version, you know, uh, uh, I don't know. There's other, yeah. Because there's other po- there's other variants, but the funny thing is that one of the variants that came out in that sort of uh, that post credit, mm-hmm. the costume he was wearing, the one that sort of kind of looked very old school Japanesey with the mustache and the big head oh, yeah, yeah, dress yeah. that he was wearing, I thought that was the version in Loki. I thought that was him, that version. Because I think he was supposed to be the version that was one of the good guys who was not much of a villain. Mm, okay. Because I remember that when they were talking about Loki and his appearance, they said, oh, he's this version of the variant. He's this ver- he's this king. Mm-hmm. And they put that one, the one that they showed in the post credit. And I was like, oh, okay. But then they show him in the post credit, and I was like, I guess it wasn't that one. I guess they're just pulling, you know, they're just pulling variants out of nowhere and creating their own at some point. But I mean, I want to see. I want to be. I want to see how it's going to turn out. I would like even like to see if like a Kang variant is actually a good guy who ends up joining the team, you know? Because they even they had one. I forgot his name. Uh, Iron Lad. There was a Kang variant named Iron Lad. He had the Iron Man costume and everything. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know much about him, but uh, he is considered a, a, a variant, a Kang variant. But the one that was in Ant Man was the one that they've, they've shown. You know, he was in the comics, and he was one of the first ones to pop up. And Man, he's gonna yeah, be one crazy. of the most powerful ones. Yeah, he's gonna do a lot of yeah. things with Jonathan Majors this uh, decade. He's gonna be yeah. a different. Mo- this man's in two movies coming out this year. Yeah, the, this movie that just came out, Quantum Mania, and and Creed three. Yeah, he's 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 doing he's doing a fantastic work. Uh, uh, honestly, I think he. At some point, he's gonna. He, I hope he wins an award in Academy. Oh, or something. definitely. Of, yeah. of, I, I, it, it, I, if, to me, it doesn't matter for what, yeah. because he he blows it he blows it out of the water when it comes to to his roles that he takes in, even in uh, um, Lovecraft Country. Um, he was great. Um, he he so, rem- his acting kind of. Is is somewhat similar to Denzel, in where they become a whole different. It's it's like a chameleon, again, yeah. just just like uh, Goodman. That's his yeah. name, Goodman. Um, uh, Gordon from uh, Batman Begins. Uh, what's his name? Uh, uh, uh um, uh, what was his name? Uh, man, he was serious black. Serious black, yeah, yeah. Goodman, Goldman, Goldman, and Gary Goldman. Yeah, yeah. Gary Oldman, Gary Oldman. Gary Oldman. Um, yeah, the way that he just, he, yes, he doesn't really change his face, but the way he acts and just like I don't know, even his voice. Oh uh, yeah, uh, it's, just... it's it's it's, I've, I've jumped from, I've jumped from um, I jumped from watching. The professional, which he played a psychotic cop of some sort, and and then jump from that to uh, 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 the Fifth Element, and it's just weird to know that they're 
him and uh, Gary Oldman, Fifth Element, and uh, they, they're both the same person. And how easily you you could, it's like he could jump into these characters. Yeah, I don't know. It's just his mannerisms too. I, it's 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 incredible. It's incredible. He's gonna be and he's gonna be nominated for something this year, maybe. Maybe next year too. Um, I forgot what I was saying. I was gonna talk about. I I did I do agree with you that it's it's joking too much. There's too many jokes that just keep going, pushing it. It's just like MCU, we gotta go back and like work on the script. A lot of people didn't like this movie because there was a lot of talking too. Yeah. And story building, and not really world building in Quantumania. A little bit about of it. I mean, we did get again a lot of side characters. I did. I definitely didn't see Bill Murray coming into the to the MCU. I, I feel like I heard a, a rumor about it, but I didn't know he was going to be in it. Yeah, I, you know, I think it was just a cameo or whatever character that he was going to portray in in this. I mean, there's. I don't think there's anything else. No, we're probably um, not going to see him ever. Yeah, it it. It just really didn't matter if he was in it, uh, honestly. Uh, people were putting too much uh, into who he was going to be. And it's like, no one's going to care. I, when I saw the film, I was like, yeah, I, that's it. Everybody's just written him off completely. There's no possible way he's going to be even mentioned again. No, he's not. Um, and the way that... Uh, the way that the people talked about Janet and her talk and her not really discussing what mm. happened in the quantum realm. And then we, you know, we find mm. out that it's uh, Kang the Conqueror. And they really did build him to be very scary and powerful. And a lot of people just hated the way that Ant-Man actually won the day. I really thought that we were going to see him be stuck in the quantum realm longer than you know it felt like maybe a whole day of yeah. an action sequence for them that he said for five five hours in in the quantum realm didn't do anything he was just around in space right and then yeah. five years happened after the blip he he missed out on it so like i guess it works only when the story matters like there's i guess a plot device here somewhere i don't know hmm like is did he actually come back to kang dynasty because that's where we're all headed right so i thought that we were gonna see them come back and kang already ruled over earth avengers have failed but that's like avengers have failed on the newspaper or something or the news tv yeah. whatever and that's it. And then it, it just ends. And so we don't pick up off until that ends. It's end. funny how you're thinking about that. And I didn't even put it two and two together, knowing that he was in a quantum realm before when he got stuck in, in Ant-Man and the yeah, Wasp. All these people got stuck there. Yeah. And he was there for like five, you know, it, it supposedly felt like five years, but it was only for a couple of minutes for him. Uh, five hours, he said. So Yeah. So... I mean, he he must have been there for a very. I mean, he couldn't have been there for only a couple of seconds. The events that took place in in uh, Quantum Mania, that means he would have to had. Maybe if he was there for two two hours, maybe two years would have passed. Or if, you know, that's a major difference. Everything that's taking place in in the Quantum Mania is, that's a major difference. That means there is time should have changed when he returned back, and that would have been great to see if they would have just like focused on that plot point that they just literally went over their heads and didn't even focus on that. I don't know. I think Marvel kind of forgot about that or thought that we would forget about that. <laughs> That's one thing that I kind of wished happened. Because now we are going to see Ant-Man because Ant-Man's going to return. But when? And apparently he did sign uh, recently with, for Mar with Marvel. I think right after a, a couple of weeks before the movie came out. That's what I heard. 
So he signed on to do a little bit more of the movies and series, but who knows? Hmm. Who knows? Um, what do you rate this movie? Uh, what's our numbers? One through ten. One through ten. The fact that they gave it a nasty number in tomato meter. Like I mean, it, it, it was right there with the eternal. A lot of the critics, though, say that you know this movie really had no, like this was more of a universe building than it was its actual movie. And I'm like, well, it kind of had it elements of like bringing the family together, or so and so, and we've seen yeah. it already in Fast and the Furious and that franchise. But I'm saying it's it's building a universe after you know this is Phase Five. This is the first movie of Phase Five. I think I'll give it a uh I'll give it a five. Really? That low? I feel like I could give it a five. I don't know. I was uh, I wasn't left with anything. You know? Mm -hmm. Like sometimes certain movies I think out of this phase, there's only been two movies that that had me in tears that had such a good story and I think it had it, it was spider-man and and wakanda forever that Man. left me in like in 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 awe and you know and no black when we get to black panther there was some things that were sort of like uh i think it was just to bring this new character around to bring namor into the into the mix which was great to to put these two kingdoms together and finally we're going to get Namor into the future films, you know? Um, you know, I, I think because of his death, it could have been more, but I think this was, it had to be driven because things needed to change quickly in order for this movie to get made. And I feel like, you know, uh, it was one of those things where it was, Force it had to be forcefully rushed to be yeah. made, you know, and that's the sad part because you know I'm pretty sure that Shuri would have probably became to become the Black Panther like after Chadwick decided to like I don't want to do this anymore, you know, and they had to sort of do that rapidly and just you know like it it and kind of it had to been forced to to be done. But you know, it, it 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 was overall. I think Spider Man and and Wakanda Forever are probably the the best ones so far. Yeah, yeah, I agree with you. I mean, I, I teared up and uh, definitely teared up in Spider Man. And I recently I recently watched uh, Black Panther Wakanda Forever again um, at the gym because you know they have a movie theater and a movie theater and you could do cardio and stuff like that. And so. Yeah. Um, you know, which I recently found out if I watch something and run, I like tend to forget what time it is. So that's yeah. definitely a, a helping thing. Um, anyways, uh, I rewatched it and I cry I teared up, but it was so hard to like not love where the movie and, and where Shuri goes and takes you and it's like a constant reminder of like who she could have became, which was Killmonger. But what she ended up learning throughout fighting Namor himself. Um, it's funny because when she picks up the mask to finally become Black Panther, she reaches out for her father's mask after talking to Killmonger. And what was funny is that Killmonger and her father, I'm not necessarily saying that they're the same person, but he killed his own brother because of what? Because of uh, what? Uh, him letting. Uh, him leaving Wakanda and kind of trying to rebel against Wakanda. But yeah. he could. But she could have became that. You know what I'm saying? Like she could have became yeah. that Black Panther once again. So then we got to go over it with, you know, his son. She didn't take that route. And I like that. I like yeah. that. The writers gave Killmonger. She touched his mask, his her father's mask, 
but she ended up with, you know, like Chadwick, he found out he didn't want to necessarily go to war with anybody. That's not what Wakanda was going to do anyways, but or should do. But I don't know. It's just it's just it was a great storytelling. I don't know. I I just like rewatching that. Um, oh, man. So yeah, I definitely agree. Phase four is is definitely like. Since we're already movies. getting into Wakanda, <laughs> forever, uh, all the characters in that film uh man everybody had a sort of it had a like a shining moment like everybody had something you know to to bring to the table and i think that's what i love about the black panther films that every even the actors that were sort of just there for only like only had a, a certain amount of screen time had didn't it, it sort of impacted the character impacted the film um even in the first film even in the second film you see everybody was sort of like angela bassett was hitting it big i'm glad that she won something for it um and Baco was great even the little bit of moment of michael b jordan being there um was phenomenal everybody was on point everybody even, um, shined and they let them shine and they the, had the, character the, developments the woman who uh okoye I forgot her name okoye? she plays his is his wife and not his wife who he had a Lupita. child with yeah Lupita, yeah yeah uh, oh my gosh name, yeah. yeah even for you know she there wasn't she didn't do a lot but again it's just like every cast member had their part in the film that drove something there was always like something compelling with the characters um and Black it was Panther had a lot of good uh, world building within wakanda itself and the characters yeah. that they were going to use and give them something and and by the time you get to the sequel you're like all right i can't wait to see this character and who they become and then like well just see them just talk you know to a person how does Mbaku talk to Shuri now that, you know, her brother's gone and now her mother's gone? And uh, you like that dynamic after, you know, the whole ceremony thing. And then yeah. after that, she becomes the Black Panther, takes the the the, the um, herbal, and then now is starting to lead Wakanda. What is the conversation like then now? I don't yeah. know. It was just so cool to see Mbaku shine, Okoye shine. Everybody shined in this movie oh so, yeah Mbaku had me dying i love that scene when he comes into the to he comes in and he has a carrot in his hand he's just eating it like he's just walking in like not sure, like like he's been there before like there's no reason like bow down to anybody and he calls okoye it's like you bald-headed demon the when fun. they start arguing about it oh man he it's just uh <laughs> it's like i i need this dude to do more yeah. I, I can't every time I see him, it's like he has such a like a strong attitude and and it's like he does humor really well while being this sort of brute sort of character. And and, and it's like I love this dude. And you know, that's why I think to me it when because we you spoke about it, the um the Batman Unburied. Mm-hmm. Because he he played the voice of the Batman, mm -hmm. and he played a phenomenal job. I mean, it, I mean, I've heard it the second time, and I was like, it would be great because right now, um, DC Comics is doing an I Am Batman, which is a Black Batman, and I would love to see if he would pull it off to play yeah. that role, like yeah. the way he did it in Un in Unburied. He he was so different it, it, because he, um, Kevin Conroy. He had a character. He didn't have a radio. He had an animated series to deal with. Yeah. And you can hear. And it, it, voice acting is very different to animation. And then, you know, radio or podcasting. Yeah. And the way that he'd been made. We can't see Batman. But we can imagine how Batman sounds. But yeah. And when you think of Batman, you think of Kevin Conroy and the way that they made his Batman look in the Arkham games yeah. and the animated series. 
But when it came to this podcast, it was kind of like, this man is 6'7". He's been through some shit. This man's seen demons and heard, and has heard them. This man sounds like a goddamn demon. He sounds like a beast. He sounds yeah. like a beast. Yeah. And that's what he made him feel like. Yeah, like this. And it was great. The, yeah, I feel like he, he had the microphone below him. Yeah. And he was that Batman. Like, my favorite episode is the one when he finally gets out of the drugs and he's in the seat and you hear like him screaming like yeah, yeah yeah and then it was like how and then you could hear the the the, the guys there talking about him like what's up with him you know it was like almost scary to even hear like he was it, it was and he was generally Bruce Wayne he wasn't even Batman yeah. he was just that personality so it was great to hear uh yeah we went off a tangent but if anybody hasn't heard before, I mean, you should listen to Batman Unburied. We're not promoting it because we don't have any, you know, when it's not like we have sponsorship, but it's a very good listen. And it's the greatest. And, and it, the, the, it's Winston Duke, the actor who played in Baku, plays the Bruce Wayne and Batman in um, Batman Unburied. And a lot of actors are in it too. So it's, it's, a, it's a very good listen. Yeah, I loved it. I think that if, you know, that what you said, uh, the I Am Batman, if that happens in an animated series, like, he could definitely, like, kill it. Yeah. I would like to see his animated, like, what DC would bring to his animated voice, the way that, you know, his Batman would look. That would be great. Um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, since I didn't get my rating... I I feel like uh, Ant Man and the Wasp: Quantumania kind of deserves, and it's crazy that it's this is now a trilogy. By the way, yeah, like you would have never thought Ant Man was gonna get more than a movie, let alone two, and now we got three, which is like crazy. Um, but I I, I feel like Ant Man: Quantumania kind of kind of deserves like a seven out of ten. But now that I think about the ending a little bit more and the way that it kind of doesn't work and I feel like writers forgot about it because of logic. Yeah. What year did they come back to? Yeah. And it, it all seemed, you know, it it shouldn't have been a, like a... It, 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 they kind of recycled the entire beginning of the film into the end. Yeah. Because remember, it does the whole walking down the street, saying hi to everybody and going into the coffee shop, blah, blah. They do that comedy, that joke there. And though it, it was like, it should have came in. It should have been coming in. Uh, they, they should have been there on like a year two or three years later or something like that because depending on how long they've been in in um the quantum realm so they should have done something with that but i don't know like i think they didn't want to go through that maybe because it's already been done and said oh my god it seems that Scott Lang seems to be going back, going through the whole time, uh, going through time again. You know, I think they didn't want to put that in there or whatever, or they just forgot to write it. Yeah. Something is, it, it's, it's, to be honest, there's a, there was a lot of potential in that ending that could have been, that could have been used. Yeah. They could have done with it. I mean, I, we know that we're going to see different Kangs throughout the multiverse. You don't really have to show it. And maybe it could have been cool to see maybe a snippet. But really flush out the ending for Ant-Man in a different way. Like, yeah, I don't know. I mean, for the moviegoer that doesn't really see the Marvel films or maybe just doesn't give any logic to it, you know, like, just think about it a little bit more than the average Marvel fan uh, comic book uh, reader does. Like... Yeah, like, where does it end up? I don't know. I mean, we already know. We don't need to see it. I mean, we kind of do. I mean, yeah, it'll, it'll be nice. I don't know. Uh, it, yeah, I, I don't know. Maybe maybe I, I give mean, it they, a 6 out of 10. To, to be honest, it could have 
it, they could have done something. We're not going to see a, probably another Ant-Man for a while. And we don't know if we're going to see Ant-Man again it, it, until like the next Avengers movie or whatever. So it's like we're not going to see Paul Rudd play the Ant-Man for a while, I think. And I think they could have done something with the ending where it takes him somewhere else. And into another, you know, a couple of years from now when one of the events are taking place, you know, you know, be at the war in Kang Dynasty or something and pop up on that moment. And it, so they could have done some things, but, you know, it, uh, I don't know what, what's what's happening. I feel like the, the writers have not doing it right i feel like they're thro- trying to throw so many stories out there yeah and to to capture as much to do as much of the stories because i feel like uh uh, uh the infinity war saga was very lenient with very like line very uh not lenient uh 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 very drawn like a straight line Everything was like, this is what's going to happen here, 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 you know. Uh, and it did, and it was pretty excellent. You could say, like, everything was sort of strategically placed and done really well. Here, because of the shows and the movies, it's kind of scattered where we don't know yet how everything is going, you know. And the funny thing is, what I've noticed was. When I went to go see it, I went to go see it with Ciara and the kids. And when they saw the other post credit scene, you know, they didn't know what was going on. And it's like, it has to, you have to see the shows to understand it. And, you know, you can't just wait for the movies to come out in theaters. Like before, when they were all coming out in theaters, now that we have shows... You know, Kevin Feige said you have to follow them so you could know what's going is going to happen in a series of films. You know, look at uh, uh, um, WandaVision, which led to Doctor Strange, Multiverse of Madness. Uh, with Loki, it kind of led, it went leading into Ant Man's uh, Kang and leading up to that sort of ending. So, we, you know, we have to follow the films, but also follow the shows because right now we're going to get secret invasions pretty soon, which is, which doesn't really, f- it's not, it's sort of a side story to what's happening because if it's the scrolls that are taking over, if that's what they're going to base themselves on, that's not even following the whole Kang storyline. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Maybe they'll hook it up at some point. Something will happen that'll lead to that. But it's 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 very it's gonna be very weird. Yeah, it's gonna be weird where this Marvel phase is gonna go to and what it ends up becoming in phase six. Yeah. With a lot of the heroes that we know from the comics, they're not going to really be there. It's going to be the you know the the characters that have you know taken up the mantle. Yeah. Um. So, with a lot of projects now that were canceled too, like that Spider Man animated series that was going to come out. On what the uh, the new year one? No, what yeah, is it? The freshman year, one, year. Freshman year. Yeah, that got canceled. But it also didn't make any sense to bring in Dr. Octopus when there was no Doc Ock or mm-hmm. mention of him in, in, you know, like, oh, I battled this person that was very similar to her. Yeah. I don't know. Let's see what they what, what they do. But um, I don't know. This was a rumor, and I'm not sure if this is going to happen. But they might, I think, might include the Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. characters into the Marvel mix. They might bring this girl who played Quake uh, into the series. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know. I feel they should bring Coulson. Uh, I, 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 you know, it, just I know that it was very, it, it went a tangent with that uh, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. 
Mm -hmm. But if they include that, at least I would love to see Robbie Reyes come back as a Ghost Rider. He was really cool. But right now he's in uh, The Last of Us. Oh, really? I didn't know that. I think I he, he was he was Pedro yeah he was Pedro Pascal's um brother brother he was the one that was in a car with oh, him I think yeah wow yeah you're right I I just yeah. remember that yeah it's crazy I don't know I, I I only saw the first one it was since it, when it came out so that yeah the the I haven't seen the the latest episode I think I'm two episodes. Uh, uh, behind right now, mm -hmm. but after the first episode, it 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 gets very interesting, and it's not like like they're they're freaking monstrous zombies. They're not just some like Walking Dead, and you know they're, they're big, which oh. it, it's it's something that I felt that we needed. I, I felt like zombies need that sort of like, we can't have people just be just eating people. We should have like, I don't know, like a mutant zombie looking thing. I don't know if we need more variety. I, it, it's, you know, we've been dealing with zombie movies for mad long. They all look like regular human beings that are just falling apart, but we don't get like, uh, I remember when Left for Dead was coming out. They had like monstrous fat zombies. They were running after you. It was yeah, just yeah, grotesque yeah. looking things. And and it's like that's what most zombie movies need. They right. need a challenge, you know. Well, yeah, I agree with you. <sighs> <sighs> well, with that being said, I think we'll conclude this episode of the podcast. Um think we should come back in two weeks and really start to grind it out again you know yeah get a little more serious with this and uh hope, you know gonna track my little um weight loss journey this year i think it'll be cool if you know we talk about a little bit more of the mental health and like you know the the, the put packs you know the what's the word when you stop uh getting more muscle at the gym um plateau maybe plateaus along the year where when you when you work out weapon what do you wear when you work out uh just the sweater you know with shirt and sweatpants yeah try to like put something like very hot yeah, yeah, yeah something yeah. that'll probably kill you even even if if you're in the winter cold mm -hmm. like it's you know it's it, it, you know, that's sometimes you could find it's weird. You could find like exercise equipment at Marshall's for cheap prices and it'd be actually pretty excellent to even just wear like wearing like like those vests that'll make you sweat or things like that or the 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 gym wear. Mm -hmm. You'd be surprised what you could find that could help you to uh, may help you out. Even have like dumbbell weights at home or you know a curling bar uh kind of want to get know, a kettle, uh, kettlebell just, just for here yeah. just for a minute you know maybe do that i don't know yeah but uh this year is going to be uh going to be changing now, hopefully we grow i mean we just got to 402 uh subs on youtube which is good i mean i i didn't think we were going to get that this year but you know what slowly putting out content and just just trying to refresh my mind Trying to find the motivation, trying to you know get back to it. I mean, I bought the goddamn freaking uh, soft editing software, so what the hell am I doing it for, you know? So yeah, we're gonna definitely come back two weeks and talk about. I'll probably I'm definitely gonna catch up on the Last of Us, so I think we should talk about the Last of Us. Yeah, I'm about to do that too. Uh, maybe catch maybe up on that. Yeah, DC animated or uh, oh, we talked. Oh, we, yeah. Super Sons, man, that movie. It's it's fun, though. Yeah, yeah, the 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 art is a little bit different from what we're used to. But I mean, if Marvel had that. Watch. Marvel had that, you know, animation that they had that three D type of model. You know, walking around. Yeah. I think it was like something like Punisher and Iron Man or or Black Widow, something like that. Yeah. I didn't like but, it. I mean, I hated it. But this one was wow. good. 
it was a fun watch to have them to the the hear to, to have them it, it was funny because i i there were a bunch of kids and it yeah. was it was fun to see because you know damien you know when he's interacting with adults he's just a snobby little kid and i think they did it right by adding someone his age mm-hmm, mm-hmm. you know i think that's what he that, needed yeah you know yeah like in the in in the new 52's animated uh, uh movie universe it, it it felt like he was just talking to himself most of the time talking to a wall of his anger yeah and I, now I, it always annoyed me every time he fought with i and i went i am remember i am the blood son and and i was like oh this kid it's like it's annoying and i could see why at some point nobody liked him you know you always got a bad rating literally danny from iron fist I am, a, that is, this is my bloodline. This is my grandfather. I am the savior of Kun Lun. No, I am the Iron Fist of Kun Lun. It's literally repeating it back back and forth. And it's just. Yeah, like, it was, it was a con, it, that was a constant annoyance. I hope they don't do that if, if they decide to bring Iron Fist back. I mean, but, with Super Sons, it was a dynamic and it was just like, let's grow as friends. Let's grow as heroes. Let's, yeah. you know, let me become something better. I don't have to keep repeating myself to everybody that I need respect because like my father's from you know I mean my father's Rachel Ghoul like no you don't yeah. need to do that yeah. change it up a bit you know and that's what I like now I like this Damien and he sounds cooler he sounds like the Damien that will have growth you know if yeah. they keep doing a sequel or something like that but that's what they did with the comics and and, and I like that dynamic and this animated movie while I didn't think the animation was amazing, the voice acting really, really helped the Yo, movie. Starro is by far one of the scariest freaking villains. It's just it, he's just he's just a star. He's just a star. But once he starts coming out of people's mouths and just going planting themselves in the face, that and was just a zombie like thing. It's just scary as heck. Yeah. Like I could see, I, I, I honestly. They could have easily made deceased be a whole Starro zombie situation happening all over the world, where it's taking over. It would have been great to see that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that I agree. <laughs> but it's it's creepy. Even it was creepy when we saw it in um, I think in 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 uh, what was it? Uh, Suicide Squad. Suicide Squad. When he popped up, and then all the people were just walking around, and it was like oh, terrifying. Yeah. Like that's just, I mean, you're even thinking about it at, at night. It, it could have been a horror DC horror villain. It just, oh, he gets infected with the virus. He's now become, you know, the, the zombie cancer universe. That that's a good, that's a good animated uh, or Elseworld comic to see. Um, but yeah, I mean. And again, the voice acting was superb. I mean, I didn't know it was uh, Troy Baker that voiced Batman. I was like, "Holy crap!" Because he sounds like Kevin, but there's like a little different... yeah. Troy Baker also um, gave the voice of him in um, in the Batman Ninja Turtles cartoon. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Not only that, he also voiced. Not only it. He's the, he also vo- voiced the Joker in the Batman Ninja Turtles cartoon. The funny thing was, it's like he's, it's like this is the first time that one actor was able to portray both Batman and Joker in one mm-hmm. animated mm-hmm. cartoon. But I think he also, I think he did it in Origins as well. Batman, yeah, uh, yeah, um, he did. He Batman did. Arkham Origins. Yeah, I mean, he's, he's great. He's great. But, uh, I do like the guy that they had for uh, the the new Fifty Two animated universe. I forgot his name. I feel like it's Mark or something like that. Say it again. Uh, the the voice actor for uh, the new Fifty Two animated yeah. universe, who was uh, the yeah, voice of Batman. Oh, I forgot his name. I know he was in a um, he was in a show called Terra Nova that I to watch but i forgot that the, the the actor i think there's jason something because i know jerry o'connell was doing superman i remember that 
And I think uh, it, Lois Lane was being played by Jessica Romaine Stamus. Rebecca Romaine Stamus was playing uh, the voice of Lois Lane. Jason O'Mara. Yeah. Then yeah. now with the new... Uh, the new new universe they're trying to build. I think it's Jensen Jensen Eccles that's doing Batman, and um, I mean his Batman I knew was going to be good. I really did like him. Uh, and who's uh, Superman in that one? Is it uh Justin O'Harley? Justin Harley? I don't know. Oh man, I don't know. Because they always try to find actors that portray DC characters before. Because I know uh, John Stewart is being played by uh, Aldous Hodge, who did Hawkman. Mm. Trying to find it. Uh, Darren Chris. Hmm. Um. But anyways. And you know that there are uh, DCs having um, a movie coming out this year called Legion of Superheroes. Uh, yes, I'm looking forward to that. Wait, actually, it released already? No, no, I didn't. Well, it's supposed to come out, but I haven't seen anything about it. It takes time for it to pop up on HBO Max, which is another Yeah, thing. it's not going to come out till later. Yeah, you're right. Let me see. I know I heard about it recently, but I don't know what when it's coming out. Uh, Which is funny because it's mad clips on on YouTube, so oh, it, it, it had to. Yeah. Oh, it came out February seventh. Mm. I got a five point seven out of ten on IMBD, and Monel is supposed to be in it too. So it's kind of a. Interesting. Yeah, I saw some interesting cl some clips on it uh, on YouTube because they like to ruin everything. Of course they do. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but yeah, with that being said, I think we're going to close this podcast right now. Um, I think that, yeah, within two weeks, we'll come back and, you know, talk about what's been going on and uh, The Last of Us 2 because, I mean, The Last of Us. Uh, live action series because well I mean it's amazing first episode literally crushed me when he was holding his daughter that was yeah that was that was fucking sad man he really can't capture that moment right uh, and make you believe that he lost his children um but yeah uh till then see you next time you can find us on Facebook YouTube Instagram twitter we don't really do twitter we should do twitter more but eh. um uh at geek mythos and also at tiktok geek mythos till then see you next time have a good one guys bye later good night